Hi, in this video I'm gonna show you how I turned cheap Android TV box into retro console emulation station running RetroPie. This video is not a tutorial, but I prepared article about the process that might be helpful if you want to attempt this project. More on that at the end of the video. In my last video I showed you that you can turn cheap Android TV boxes into ARM microcomputers running Linux. This is a great alternative to buying Raspberry Pis if you don't mind lack of support and GPIO pins and challenge of running uncommon setup. TV boxes cost fraction of Raspberry Pis, are more powerful than certain models and you can actually buy them. Last time I bought one to convert it to IKVM but since they are so cheap I bought another one with intention to turn it into retro games emulation machine. Same as last time, I bought it used from OLX and paid 40 zloty, even less than last time. I once again bought MXQ Pro 4K, but this time 5G version, which was causing more harm than good, but more on that later. It features 1GB of RAM and Amlogic S905W 4-core ARM CPU running at 1.2GHz. It's a weaker and cheaper brother of S905 CPU I drew in my last TV box. Yep, you heard that right, drew, because as Miss Gump always said, TV boxes are like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. Jokes aside, buying TV box, especially used one, is a CPU lottery. Most TV boxes are simply rebrands, so model does not tell you anything. Same motherboard might be found in many models and single model can have multiple motherboards with various CPUs from different manufacturers. Now let's focus on the setup process. I installed newest Ambient operating system on my TV box and the problems started. First of all, onboard Wi-Fi chip. With my previous TV box I had no problem with Wi-Fi chip, it was running great out of the box. But with this one Seems like drivers for onboard Wi-Fi do not exist for Linux, simply because it's not used in any other computer applications. So my other option was to use USB dongle. While it was initially working fine, after reboot it stopped, because of course it did. Long story short, I was trying to manually compile the drivers for Wi-Fi dongles I had, but either I could not get some packages or compilation would simply fail. Thankfully, I learned from the forum that the drivers for the chips used inside the dongles are built for Arbian. What you know, I installed full firmware package via Arbian config and all the dongles were working. Great, couple of evenings wasted. Another bigger issue was resolving lack of GPU hardware acceleration. Without it, everything drawn on the screen was calculated on CPU rather than GPU. In the process, I learned that under Linux, display drivers and GPU drivers are separate from each other and that Linux community is so tempted that they reverse engineered driver for Mali 450 GPU used in my system on a chip. The issue was related to faulty simple DRM driver that prevented loading Lima driver. I found the answer to my problem on Ambient Jira and blacklisting faulty simple DRM driver in boot options resolved the issue. That took another couple of evenings. It might sound like I don't like Ambian, but I assure you I do. I think it's a great system and the issues were either on me not knowing it enough or simply because Ambian team is small and I imagine it is hard to predict and handle every hardware configuration. Now with system fairly ready it was time to install emulators. I had four takes doing so. First, I tried to install RetroArch. The problem with this approach was that the developer provides emulation cores built only for x86 architecture and while I finally found some repository with cores built for ARM, the interface was so sluggish to the point that it was unusable. My second thought was to install emulators natively. I started off with DuckStation, PS1 emulator, but once again 
there were no builds for ARM architecture, so I had to build it from source. While preparing setup for compilation was easy, I could not get it to compile because I was running out of RAM memory and the process just freezed. I temporarily disabled GUI, but that still wasn't enough. The third attempt was to install emulators from repositories. I thought that since I installed Armbian with Ubuntu repositories as default, they surely must be some emulators pre-compiled for ARM architecture. And I was right, but I also learned that not everything that is officially compiled is being tested. That was the case with Higan, SNES emulator. Trying to launch in the game crashed the app, and from what I learned online, that was due to inappropriate compilation settings. I also tried PCSXR, and when it launched and worked, performance was very sluggish. I was about to give up, but then I decided to search the internet if somebody attempted to install RetroPie on non-Raspberry Pi machine. I found an article how to do it on Orange Pi 3. I repeated the steps and to my great surprise, it worked flawlessly. This was a breakthrough. I previously attempted to install RetroPie without modifying installation script and failed, but this time it just worked. RetroPie itself is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu, but developers also provided an installation script that can turn an Ubuntu-based distro into RetroPie. Since Arbion is Ubuntu-based, it was possible to install RetroPie, but as I said, with some modifications made to installation scripts. However, the term installation does not truly really reflect what the script really does. The script does not download pre-built binaries, but builds everything locally, which is a common theme in this project. Yes, everything. Emulators, games, UI, literally everything was built on 5 watt ARM CPU from a TV box. The whole installation slash compilation process took literally about 3 days and I'm still amazed it succeeded. Ok, it installed, but you might ask, does it really run? Yes, yes it does. I had to lower the resolution to 720p and play with emulators used, but it works even better than I expected. Since I'm not much a retro gamer, I tried only two consoles, SNES and PS1. After changing default emulator, SNES games worked no problemo. In terms of PS1 performance, I tried running Crash Team Racing and it was playable. Well, playable doesn't mean it was pleasant experience. While the game worked, you could clearly see and hear slowdowns. It feels like if the CPU had just a little bit more power, the games would run smoothly on 720p. But as I said earlier, getting great CPU is a lottery with these machines. I also had to get creative with cooling system, because the stock case is so air restrictive that the CPU starts throttling after a few minutes of gameplay. I cut a hole on top of the case and replaced small stock radiator with the one harvested from that PC motherboard. I used thermoconductive glue to attach it to CPU and it passed the test. I will not dwell more on how the games nor emulators run, because that is not the point of this video. This project was a proof of concept and self-challenge for me. It proves that you can take spyware TV box, basically something that is e-waste at the beginning of its life and turn it into emulation station and don't need Raspberry Pi to do it. As I said at the beginning, this video is not a tutorial, but for the folks interested in reproducing this, I prepared an article on my website in which I described the process itself and the problems I had to deal with. Please keep in mind that this is not a manual, but a project report. So if something worked in my case, might not necessarily work for you, and the process itself is quite tedious. The whole process, with debugging involved, 
took me a couple weeks of evenings. The link to the article can be found in the description. If you are interested in the topic of converting TV boxes to computers, you can check out the last video I made about converting one into Mini Mac Mini. That is all for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it or dislike if you didn't and subscribe for more computer, care solutions and technology related content. Thanks for watching.